you would like to give a mini album like this as a present for Christmas, but you don't have a clue how to do this, then stay tuned and I will show you exactly how to do it. Hi, this is Max and today we will create a little flap album. I'm using papers from the Tim Holtz seasonal paper collection and I'm starting with a single 12 by 12 inch piece and cutting it in three equal parts. Then I'm scoring three inches from each side of each of the pieces and folding them at these lines. All three of the pieces will be adhered at those side flaps. I'm trying to adhere them as exactly as possible to avoid any issues later on. To bring the pieces together I'm pressing them firmly with my bone folder and then proceed with the second flap. This is creating a gatefold that covers the lower page and two other pages at the sides, each having another little flap. Unfortunately I don't like the backside of this design paper and so I'm covering it with a different one. If you already have a design paper where both pages are pleasing you, then you don't need to do this step. But if you have the same issue as I do, or your paper is only single-sided, then this might be a possible solution. And this already concludes the interior of the album. But we need a cover and so I'm cutting this out of dark brown cardstock with the same width as the album. To have the exact measurements of the album, I'm laying the interior onto the cover and score it right next to the edge. And then I'm scoring a second time, about an eighth of an inch next to that score line. But as you can see the cover is not long enough and so we need an additional piece to lengthen it. For this I'm using a spellbinder border die on a red piece of cardstock to give it an interesting border. Then I'm adhering a matching piece of striped scrap paper as embellishment as well as a little picture from the seasonal paper collection. Also by Tim Holtz is the stamp that I'm using to stamp the Merry Christmas right on top. I'm using Versamark ink and golden embossing powder by Ranger to heat emboss this. While the rest of the powder is going back into the can, I'm heating up the heat gun already to avoid the paper to roll up. And I love how the golden embossing powder is coming up while it is melting. And now we need a counterpart for the inside. I already prepared this with the border die and now cutting a small slot in the middle right below the ornaments. I'm threading a ribbon through this slot, which is long enough to go around the album and to tie a bow. After I measured the middle of the ribbon, I'm securing it by using a tape runner. When adhering the green paper to the cover, I make sure that all the edges are evenly covered with tape. 
To also have a clean edge at the score lines of the cover, I'm using the tape at the edge of the green paper instead of the brown cardstock. So I'm avoiding the tape to smear along the crease of the brown cover. And now I'm simply adhering the red cover just on top of the green and brown pieces. This covers the border between them and how the ribbon is attached. On the inside, I'm again adhering the ribbon with my tape runner. And I'm also cutting a slot with my craft knife to thread the ribbon through the cover again. And now it's time to adhere the interior to the cover. And I'm also using tape for this because I can remove it for a few seconds and adhere it again if I did a mistake. Also here the edges need to be exactly on top of each other. And at the end I'm adhering another piece of the green design paper to the right flap of the cover to complete the look. And this concludes the album and I can proceed with the embellishments. I'm using the stitched rectangles by Memory Box to create small photo mats for the little pictures from the paper collection. I will use these as primary embellishments as well as some snowflake die cuts by Sizzix. I'm adhering this photo mat only at two sides so that another picture can be tucked behind. The photo mat on the right side of the cover is a pure embellishment and there is not enough space for anything else. The snowflakes I'm also adhering with tape by using a scrap piece of paper as working surface. To pimp the edges of the small flaps I'm using some lace and adhering it with simple craft glue that dries crystal clear. I'm using the negative space from a star-shaped die to create a photo mat for the large page. By using another red photo mat below, the star really pops from the creamy cardstock. And here I'm trying to create an embellishment out of several scrap pieces. However, this took me so long that I will give you a shortcut right up to the end. But I want to show you how to use only parts of your punches by tucking the paper from underneath the punch. For the gatefold flaps I'm using a star shaped die cut on a picture of Santa and adhere it onto two more layers of stars. I'm using a liquid glue pen to cover the frame in the middle. Afterwards I'm covering it with golden glitter by pressing it onto the pieces using the paper that is my working surface. Then the glitter needs to be flipped off as best as can and the excess put back into the can.
the left side of the star will now be adhered to the left flap, creating kind of a closure to the gatefold. And here I found a metallic buckle that looks like the buckle of Santa's belt when I'm combining it with a black ribbon. I'm also adhering the ribbon with craft glue. By doing so, the ends do not unravel over time. The big page again holds a big photo mat, which I am embellishing with three little stars. The star that sticks onto the mat is only adhered at the ends to enable a photo to slip under it. And finally two more pictures from the paper collection to the right and the left hand side. As I told you before, I was not content with the embellishments on the previous page. And so I'm adhering a matted picture on this side as well. And after the glue is dry enough, I'm cutting the ends of the ribbon to fit the page. If you've seen more of my albums already, you know that I'm usually sewing my pages. But this time it would have made my pages far too thick. And so I'm drawing a faux stitch with my fine liner on all the pages. But to keep it short for you, I'm showing you only some stages of this work. And this is really bringing everything together as now the frames and the edges have a faux stitch. And after a quick look at all the pages, I'm closing the booklet, tying the bow on the outside and cutting the ribbon in a V-shape. And so, we are done. By the way, this is a wonderful thing for all of you that are often late and looking for a last minute present. It can be easily done in an hour's time and will definitely be a highlight. And here are some close-ups and then we are done for this week. I hope you had fun and got inspired and give me a thumbs up. I'm also looking forward to reading your comments and suggestions that you may leave in the comments area below this video. If you haven't done it yet, I would love to have you subscribe because I will have a new video for you every week which will hopefully inspire you. I also listed the most recent album videos here. And if you are watching from a mobile device, you can find the links in the description box as well as in the info cards. Many thanks again for watching and hope to see you next week. Bye bye!